Person, I'm really sorry that I'm not with you today, um, but I wanted to make sure that we stuck with our new tradition, which seems to be working really well with First Chapter Friday. Because it's a virtual Thursday's group, you get to take part as well. And I'm really excited to introduce a book to you today. It's called The Boil in the Wooden Box, and it's by a man named Leon Layson. And his story is so important because it um, is just one of thousands of stories of children who survived the Holocaust during World War II. Um, during the prologue, Liam will sort of introduce um, his family to us and ultimately the situation that led to saving his life. Before I share the prologue, I will let you know that although this book has really short chapters and is fairly easy to read and understand, it is very deep and real and true. And if reading about physical and mental abuse about the atrocities that were committed during the Holocaust is challenging for you um, or triggering for you, then this may not be the book for you. However, if you are brave and open and willing to um, take risk and push yourself, it really is um, a, a story that for me gave me um, a new perspective on the Holocaust and the trials that those who lived it faced. So this is the cover. I have about seven copies. There is a Google um, form link at the bottom of the slide where you can click to sign up to read this book. I'll do the drawing when I return to school on Tuesday morning. So the cool thing about Leon Lason is he eventually became an American citizen, married, became a teacher, was a father, and he never shared anything about his experiences with anyone until right before he wrote this book. And he said that the reason why he felt like he needed to write this book is because the man who was the one who saved Leon Lason and about a thousand others. His name was Oscar Schindler and he was a Nazi. He was a businessman and he used backdoor deals and swindling and connections with other Nazis to put place Jews on a list of people that he felt really needed to work at his um, factories. He said these people had a level of expertise that couldn't be matched anywhere else and in order for him to produce the, the things that he was producing for the German cause, he needed these people. And he rescued them from Auschwitz, which was one of um, the most deadly concentration camps. And Leon will tell us a little bit about that here in the prologue. This is a map. It says pre-war border shown. That means this was the border for Poland and this is what Eastern Europe looked like at the start of World War II. If you're familiar with a map of Europe, you may know that it's different. Borders have changed. Prologue. I have to admit, my palms were sweaty and my stomach was churning. I'd been waiting in line patiently, but that didn't mean I wasn't nervous. It was my turn next to shake the hand of the man who'd saved my life many times. But that was years ago. Now I wondered if he would even recognize me. Earlier that day in autumn 1965, on my way to the Los Angeles airport, I told myself that the man I was about to meet might not remember me. It'd been two decades since I'd seen him, and that meeting had been on another continent and under vastly different circumstances. I had been a scrawny, starving boy of 15, who was the size of a 10-year-old. Now, I was a grown man of 35. I was married, a U.S. citizen, an Army veteran, and a teacher. As others moved forward to greet our guest, I stayed behind in the background. After all, I was the youngest of our group, and it was only right that those who were older should go ahead of me. To be honest, I wanted to postpone as long as I could my disappointment if the man to whom I owed so much didn't remember me. 
Instead of disappointed, I felt elated, warmed by his smile and his words. I know you who you are, he said with a glint in his eye. You're little Layson. I should have known Oscar Schindler would never disappoint me. On that day of our reunion, the world still didn't know of Oscar Schindler nor of his heroism during the Second World War. But those of us at the airport knew. All of us and over a thousand others owed our lives to him. We survived the Holocaust because of the enormous risk Schindler took and the bribes and the backroom deals he brokered to keep us, his Jewish workers, safe from the gas chambers of Auschwitz. He used his mind, his heart, his incredible street smarts, and his fortune to save our lives. He outwitted the Nazis by claiming we were essential to the war effort, even though he knew that many of us, myself included, had no useful skills at all. In fact, only by standing on a wooden box could I reach the controls of the machine I was assigned to operate. That box gave me a chance to look useful, to stay alive. I'm an unlikely survivor of the Holocaust. I had so much going against me and almost nothing going for me. I was just a boy. I had no connections. I had no skills. But I had one factor in my favor that trumped everything else. Oscar Schindler thought my life had value. He thought I was worth saving, even when giving me a chance to live put his own life in peril. Now it's my turn to do what I can for him, to tell about the Oscar Schindler I knew. My hope is that he will become part of your memory, even as I was always a part of his. This is also the story of my life and how it intersected with his. Along the way, I will introduce my family. They also endangered their lives to save mine. Even in the worst of times, they made me feel I was loved and that my life mattered. In my eyes, they are heroes too. I want you to know if you are not, um, if the Holocaust is, is something new to you, that during World War II in the 1940s, Adolf Hitler was the leader of the Nazi party and the Nazis and those who sympathize with them were um, responsible for the death of 6.2 million Jews. 6.2 million. That's a huge number. And Oscar Schindler, a Nazi, a businessman, a German, is responsible for saving more than a thousand of them. Leon Lason's story is extremely powerful. So I encourage you, if you're willing, to jump in and read. Remember, it's a memoir, so all of the memories that Leon shares with us are real, the good and the bad. Happy reading. I did that whole thing and there was nothing. Oh, fucking A. Test, 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 test. Yes, yeah, that's what I thought. So I have to do a new movie recording, get that to load, and then I have to do a new screen recording.